Well, uh, the back series GDP data has uh, generated a goodish bit of uh, controversy. And uh, earlier today, we had, of course, uh, uh, the finance minister as well speaking about it. Arun Jaitley defended the new back series data that has handed serious uh, cuts to the GDP rates achieved under the UPA regime, that is from 2006 to 2012. Uh, it's been revised uh, below the 7% mark for that seven year period, and it was above. 8%, uh, in fact, above 8.5% on an average, according to the old series. From fiscal year 2006 to fiscal year 2012, the growth rate has been revised lower for every year by about 100, 100 to 180 points. The sharpest cut has been handed to FI11, where the GDP stands at 8.5% against the old series growth rate of 10.3%. Former Finance Minister P. Chidambaram questioned why the Niti Aayog should be releasing this data and not the Central Statistical Office. He called it a hatchet job and went on to call the Niti Aayog an utterly worthless body that should be shut down. Defending the data, Finance Minister Jetli said, and I quote, uh, data based on facts and on the best global practice is rejected by the Congress Party because it takes away the last of its surviving arguments, my GDP growth was higher than yours. End of quote. What was welcomed by the UPA in 2015 is now being criticized in the year 2018 because it revises it downwards. The CSO is a highly credible organization. It completely maintains an arm's length distance from the finance ministry. In fact, we also come to know of the data only when it is finally released. All former individuals and very eminent people who headed the CSO are of the same opinion that this data is far more inclusive. I don't think any service is being rendered by people who choose to discredit a highly credible organization like the CSO because uh, its data is really based uh, 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 on facts and the revised formulations, uh, which is a continuous exercise because every time you try and improve upon the, uh, your formulations to make them more representative of the real state of the economy itself. This series increased the growth rates for some years, not just the growth rates for the ones in which this government was in power, but even for the previous one. Now, when we used exactly the same methodology backwards, you ended up with a certain set of numbers. Now, one can accept this and say this is a good system, which I think it is. It's an internationally accepted system. And apply it backwards, and the, you know, if it happens that it gives you a certain outcome, so be it. One has to then accept it. One cannot accept one part of the data and not the other part of the data. Modi, ankhdo ka madari. Because जब इनको लगता है कि भाई आंकड़े बदलने हैं, तो सरकार इनके साथ चलने लगती है, independent organisations इनके साथ चलने लगती है, चाहे वो CSO, NSSO हो, तो मुझे तो लगता है कि जब असत्य के आधार पे सरकार चलती है ना तो कुछ भी कर सकते हैं ये लोग जब इन्होंने खुद जो आंकड़े सही आंकड़े दिए तो लग रहा है कि कैसे करें क्योंकि इनकी ग्रोथ रेट तो बहुत कम है हां इस साल भी 7.23 से ज्यादा नहीं होने वाली तो कैसे 2019 में जाएंगे जब तक ये मैनिपुलेट नहीं करेंगे जब तक ये मदारी की तरह आंकड़ों का बदलाव नहीं करेंगे well, all those were political comments, but uh, let's get some academics and experts on the issue. To discuss the back series further, we are now joined by Sudip Tomandal. He was the chairman of uh, the Committee on Real Sector Statistics, which was constituted by the National Statistics Commission. And his report uh, uh, was withdrawn by the government, which termed it as an experimental uh, uh, report. And on the basis of that, of course, uh, further back series data has been trimmed. Uh, uh, Dr. Mundal, thank you very much for joining me on the show. Uh, well, first up, uh, have you gone through the revisions? Uh, uh, for most years, the revision is between 150 and 180 basis points, in some cases even 200 basis points. Uh, is this how you envisioned it uh, uh, or do you see it uh, a little uh, confusing or uh, uh, difficult to digest? 
No, uh, you know, I have, of course, uh, seen the numbers. I haven't had the chance to look at the details of all the adjustments that have been made mm. or the new sources of data used or the quality or robustness of the data and so on. But let me say that, you know, this whole thing that we just played out mm. is very unfortunate that, you know, uh, national statistics, uh, whether of GDP or anything else, uh, become the subject of a political slugfest between the ruling party and the opposition and so on. Mm. This is really not the healthy <laughs> way yes. in which you want to generate data. And I have one takeaway from all this for mm. all of us mm. is to try and ring fence mm. the, you know, the statistical production system mm. uh, from government so that these types of, uh, you know, uh, controversies don't arise. Mm. Uh, but, you... uh, sorry... Uh, no, you Just think... one other point. That no. having been said, mm. I must say that I'm very happy that uh, finally, after a delay of three years, mm. the government has produced what it calls the official mm. set of uh, back numbers because these are very important for all mm. sorts of analysis, both mm. private sector, researchers, yeah. government, and yeah. so on. Uh, I just wish they would have done it earlier. Okay. And no, Dr. Mundal. Uh, sources were not there, mm. if, at least when my committee was meeting. And by the way, the CSO was the secretariat for my committee. Mm. This is not something that, that they, they didn't were know about. From. Okay. So, they, I mean, they were there, and I, we kept requesting them for one year to complete whatever work they were doing, but they, they said they were doing some. Mm. calculation of okay. their new numbers and so on. Right. Till last July, they did not. And uh, if they had a problem with uh, what the numbers that were being put out then, mm. they could have written a note of dissent or something. There was nothing like that. Okay. And uh, though we did mention in the report that mm. this other work was ongoing, it was not yet ready. Okay. Okay. And now no. within two months, they've come out with a different set. So yeah. I haven't looked at the, as I said, the robustness of mm. these new sources, new mm. adjustments, because... When the main source is not there, you have to do some adjustment yes. of one kind or another. And yeah. it's your judgment call which type of adjustment is the best way to go. Okay. No, uh, well, before I come to which is the best way to do the adjustment, uh, I just want to ask you whether, you know, complementary or concurrent data are making sense. Because if you remember from 2005 to 2010, 11, 12, uh, we boasted of about the best savings and the best investment to GDP ever. Uh, you know, the savings rate went up steadily from about 23-24% all the way to, uh, you know, 36%, uh, 38% also one year, I think. And uh, investment rate went up all the way to 35%. Uh, if that was the rate at which uh, savings and investment grew between 2004-3-4 to 2012, can it be that uh, the GDP rate is so much lower compared to the current period when savings rate has dipped below 30% and we are apparently showing a higher average growth of 7.3? The average for those seven years, I calculated in the new series, it comes to 6.9. Uh, doesn't this look uh, uh, a little difficult yeah, to gel? Uh, yeah. Lata, you, you, <laughs> you rattled off a number of numbers. I, I don't have any numbers in front of me just now. But uh, from what I remember, the investment rate, which is what matters, had peaked just before the global financial crisis mm. in the year 2007-8 at somewhere around 35% and is now down to around 28% mm. uh, or thereabouts. And it's been steadily coming down. It's not as though it's suddenly come down. Yes. It has been coming down. Now, in that particular year of 2007-8, mm. mm. uh, uh, because you're talking about internal consistency. I think that is the important problem. We can't really discuss data source and all that without getting into mm. it. But the internal consistency, I think there are some issues. Mm. You find that the year on which the growth rate came down very mm. sharply, and then it came down in, uh, you know, the old series, the news back series. Mm. We had found the same thing when we did our competition. Mm. Uh, the, the data that was released yesterday shows that the investment rate was slightly lower, not hugely lower, slightly lower than the you know, previous year. Yeah. But the net exports, that is net of imports, which mm. is the other big source of stimulus, yep. there was a huge increase of over 20%. Okay. And public expenditure, that is what, you know, gross uh, in the fi government final consumption expenditure, mm. uh, was also about, I mean, there's a marginal difference, there's not big changes. Okay. So, 
something has to give, something has to account for this huge dip in growth mm. when none of the indicators, the collateral indicators, they call them, mm. are pointing in that direction. Yeah. So from the uh, consumption the side, you're not able to find uh, collateral indicators. 2008-9 is exactly the opposite. Very sharp increase in growth, which we all knew about. Mm. India and China recovered very fast, as you know. Yes. Uh, but you look at the numbers, and that year, the net exports, Mm. actually dipped by minus 12, it went down by 12%. Yes. And you find, of course, the GDP uh, investment rate continues to decline, but at a slow pace. Mm. And there's a big fiscal stimulus. So yeah. does the fiscal stimulus alone account for this huge increase in growth despite the decline in uh, net exports is the question. Mm. Okay. So so these are some of, there are other issues, but let me just quote these two. There's a few okay. other issues. Okay. of internal consistency, which I think the CSO needs to look at because somebody or the other, will they, these numbers are now going to be scrutinized very carefully and people will raise these questions. Mm. Now, the other question I wanted to raise was bank loan growth. Now, that is not a computed number. It is something you get uh, uh, when you add up uh, uh, the uh, loan growth uh, shown by uh, the banking system, the scheduled commercial banks. It's, an, uh, it's a number that RBI releases every week in its weekly statistical supplement. Uh, that chart will come up for us. Uh, in 2000, uh, FI06, it was standing at 31.6%, and subsequent years, it's 24%, 25%, uh, 21%. Uh, there's one year of 14%, which is FI09, the year of uh, uh, the crisis. But it's still at all times above 15%. So it's between 15 and 31% for the uh, seven years where uh, revised data has come. And if you compare that with the four years of since FY14, when the new series of GDP is uh, uh, in vogue, uh, the uh, loan growth is systematically at 8%, 8%, 8.2, 8.4, 7.5. Now, can these coexist, sir, that you have a lower GDP? For seven years, the average is, uh, 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 you know, loan growth is between 15 and 30%. And then you have a higher GDP at a time when loan growth is in single digits. Yeah, this we have been seeing for quite some time now. And uh, what we should look at actually is not overall credit growth, but non-food credit growth. Yes. Uh, which is what would... Uh, the other one is very linked to agriculture and so on. Okay. The rest of it. Uh, there can also be changes. There can, you can have disintermediation and, and you know, that mm. kind of thing. Uh, not going through the banking system. Mm. But all that being said, I, I think it has been noted that this has been a major constraint. I mean, that's what this whole uh, part of what lies behind this whole controversy going on between the RBI and uh, the finance ministry mm. is about loosening up on credit, right? Mm. That's what it's all about. Yes. Uh, so we've known that the mm. credit growth has been very slow. No, no, Fortunately, no. in the last couple of quarters, I've find that it's going back mm. to, you know, 15 percent. No, no, my, my point is more limited. Uh, I'm just yes. asking you if, you know, if credit growth is as high as 30 percent, one would assume that, and uh, as we were noticing at that time, investment rates also were jumping from 25 to 35 percent in those years up until uh, uh, FI09. Uh, then chances are it will create more jobs, more output, more consumption. So is it possible that the average GDP now can be higher than the average GDP then? Uh, let's also remember that is the time when India became part of the acronym BRICS. Why? Because it was considered a high-growth country. So suddenly to mm. see all that growth being washed away by the statistician is a little puzzling. Yeah, so th this is the same point. It's another aspect, the same issue you're raising about collateral numbers. Mm. You know, and one must always be careful when producing GDP and so on to keep an eye on whether it is consistent with everything else, is what you might call triangulation, that other sources of information, does it fit? And I mentioned a couple of them. You are mentioning another one about, you know, credit. And I agree with you that these are questions that, uh, you know, the, the CSO must now think about addressing because people will ask these questions. Okay. Uh, but uh, have you gone through the uh, back series and why is it so different from yours? Uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> what was the problem of the Black Series? I mean, I think they should have done something about it in three years, but the problem was that you didn't have the data source, MC, MCA21 in particular, but also other new sources that were being used in the, in the new you know, 11, 2011, 12 base GDP mm. series mm. for the earlier period. Mm. 
So you have to make some adjustments, or as I was mentioning in some other channel, you have to do what we call jugad mm. somehow. But you do it in a way that you find is least disruptive mm. and you know uh, meets maximum credibility, mm. knowing full well that you don't have actually the quality of robust numbers that you want. Yeah. Now what we did is we assumed we didn't produce any data on. We assumed that the twenty four five base figures of CSO were correct, that the twenty eleven twelve. Uh, figures were correct, but there was a gap between these two. You know, the projection of 20 old base and the new base, and that we we distributed incrementally between these. Uh, you know, this this long period in between, so that in any given year, you did not find much change in the growth rate as per the old estimates and you know our uh, back freeze. and yet you ended up in 2011-12 at exactly the same GDP level. Uh, which the new series gave you. So this is our way of doing it. Of course, the assumption is that there was a gradual adjustment in the production mm. process, and you know that's what we try to mimic. Okay. Now somebody else can do it in some mm. other way. If you, of course, if you have new sources of data, mm. and there's some reference to it in, in the new series, that they have mm. other information which is not available, uh, not for us, but mm. in the CSO data that was there earlier. Yeah. Uh, you can have different sets of numbers, but that's okay. what will have to be examined. I mean, those I don't want to take a view on that, okay. you know, in a cavalier manner. All right. Uh, no, I take you your know. point. Uh, yeah, mm. we need uh, probably more uh, data on that. But, uh, uh, you know, the uh, CSO's back series seems to have reduced because the 2004 data and the 2010-11 uh, index now based years had a 200 percentage point, a 200 basis point difference for the year 2010-11 it seems to have spread that difference uh, across the past uh, 10 years or past uh, 7 years. Uh, well, uh, Dr. Bundel, let me come to another issue. Uh, uh, you know, corporate earnings growth. If you remember, those were the big years of, uh, uh, you know, stock market uh, exuberance as well. And I can... Which years are you referring to now? I'm Sorry. referring to FY05 to uh, FY89. And in fact, even going okay. on to FY12, after a big dip in FY8, we again saw... Uh, markets climbing. Now, if you look at the uh, Sensex earnings, Sensex EPS data, and that's playing out actually on the channel, it starts at about 400 rupees, 420 rupees in 2005, and steadily climbs to 700, 800 thousand. By 2012, we come to 1100 rupees. So it's a climb of about 12% uh, uh, compounded annual growth rate. Whereas if you look at again 2014 to 18, it has been around that 1300 rupees mark. Not much change because EPS growth was between uh, you know two and three percent in those years. Again, would you say that GDP can grow for a sustained period at a higher level if corporate earnings don't grow much? Uh, uh, is it possible? Uh, uh, no, the, you know again, corporate earnings is uh, <clears throat> one part of the economy. It is the, just the organized uh, sector and, and so forth. However, it accounts for a fairly large part of GDP. So you're quite right uh, that, you know, these things have to, uh, in a sense, they need to gel. And mm. this is what I mean by internal consistency of your numbers. Mm. Uh, I was referring to within the statistics that have been produced. You okay. are referring to collateral statistics, whether mm. it is whether it be the credit flow or the corporate data and so okay. on. Yeah. So, uh, these are questions I'm not going to answer them oh, right, for right. you. It is for the CSO to answer, you know, okay. how they're going to No, no, I'm all. just uh, wondering if yeah. this kind of divergence can exist with collateral sets of data when they are referring to the same economy. And uh, numbers which are, okay, this is not inflation tested. Uh, these are nominal numbers mm -hmm. and I should be comparing them yeah. with nominal GDP. Yeah. I take that point. But even then they show growth, uh, which is much faster than the growth in the 14 to 18 period. And hence uh, mm. uh, the inability to accept it. Okay, uh, 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 Dr. Mundal, do you think the presentation of the data should not have been by Niti Aayog? That gave it a political color? Huh, that's a good. I must say I haven't really applied my uh, mind to it. Okay. Uh, you know, one thing is there that uh, there is a kind of oversight role mm. which planning commission used to have before, and which I think Nikiaro has now, mm. which includes the work being done at uh, Mosque and so on. For instance, the I think the committee that appoints the chief statistician is chaired by the you know by the vice chairman, the uh, vice president Fair. of Nikiaro and so on. Okay. So, I mean, they, they have a role in mm. this, but uh, 
on hindsight i think it may have been in the interests of the government to let uh, you know uh, most be deal with it and maintain a distance okay. because now uh, you know as people are uh, saying that you know the the mosque is not independent and mm. so forth uh, so it would have been helped so the optics is not uh, that good okay. but anyway yeah. i mean i, I mm. don't know whether they talked about it earlier but uh, nita does have a role mm. on on the statistics uh, production process that's, okay that's so maybe it was only a, a ceremonial role of presenting but uh, Uh, it yeah. perhaps gave it a political color, uh, but uh, yeah. Dr. Bundel, no, I'll tell you why the perception is a little dangerous. Uh, we have been doing our poll for the second quarter GDP number, which is going to be announced on uh, November 30th, and the joke doing the rounds in uh, banking circles, economist circles, is uh, okay. We are expecting 7.3 or 7.4. That's the average we are getting, but uh, chances are it will be 8% going by the new role that the CSO has taken on itself. Do you think? Uh, <laughs> do you think uh, that we are going down a dangerous path that uh, uh, you know changing the uh, growth Look, rates i i i must say i would be very surprised if the quarterly gdp number that will be released tomorrow mm. shows us that the growth rate is uh, more than what was it 8.2% or something last quarter i, yes. I think it will be a little less mm. Uh, uh if it isn't <laughs> then maybe this <laughs> joke will get a second life okay no i guess it will be also because there is a big base effect uh, uh 8.2k yeah, yeah. on a base of 5.6 that's 5. right that's that is because of that i'm saying it will be less okay. yeah. no how do you restore the image of the cso it's uh, it's very unfortunate if uh, such an important white organ uh, is being given a political color uh, come another government uh, you will get another set of back series uh, is the joke Uh, how do you restore this the well actually the technology. answer to that question is a, is a, is a it's a very serious question actually and it requires a very serious uh, answer mm. and my answer is that to ring fence the statistics production system of this country mm. completely from the executive whichever the government this government previous government next government but isn't it uh, i mean isn't uh, it i remember previous finance ministers being shocked by inflation numbers just as we were in the newsroom when they came so i always thought there was an arms length isn't there um you know uh, i mean just not that we have to emulate them but i am told mm. that the chief statistician in the uk mm. has the same rank or same level mm. not the same powers mm. as the prime minister i was quite shocked <laughs> to hear this okay it is all to give them that kind of you know gravitas and importance and make them independent of the executive not reporting to you know some minister or the other okay and that is i think the way to go all oh, right well some that's... institutions should be ring fenced with you know what they call charged items in the budget so there's not voted in parliament and and the executive doesn't have control over them okay that's the biggest lesson we've got from this conversation dr sulito mondalum appreciate you taking time out and speaking to us uh, uh, we have to restore uh, the uh, independence of the cso even if it is only in perception that uh, it has come down a bit uh, maybe uh, the uh, methods that dr mudil is suggesting would be something we should experiment with